Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Judlin. I hope you had a wonderful week. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Mansoon. Um, it's Noren there. Noren, how are you? If you can hear me. Okay. Fine, thank you, sir. Good, good. Um, we are almost um, out of this semester. Um, just about um, a week to go. So we still need to make sure that um, we keep pushing um as far as we can so that we get through this semester successfully with um good grades and as a, as a result also living with um some good knowledge all right um is there any question before we start today's um section Anybody have any question before the section starts? All right, good. Um, we're gonna be dealing with um, another wonderful topic. Um, it is a subtopic as we have um, already um, treated it partially in um, one of our topics. We saw that when we were dealing with productions, and we also um, did some, some slight um, discussion and practical questions about that under competitive um, market as well. And uh, sorry, under perfectly competitive um, market. So um, it's more or less a, a sort of revis revision for, for us. And I believe um, each and everyone is going to take part of this um, I want this very topic to be very practical because we need this. This is one of the topics that you will need to be able to um, do whatever you do. At the end of your, your program, if you find yourself somewhere in any organization, any position you find yourself, if you decide to even establish your own organization, your own company, yes, you need this topic practically to be able to run your business and effectively you know so at the end of the day i'm expecting each and everyone to at least um contribute to it if you cannot contribute try to be part of it get engaged in what we are doing understand the course sorry the topic so that it will help you along the line um at the end of the day if you cannot get anything from your mba course you should be able to at least know how to make decisions and this is one of the courses that will help you that will support you in making um uh, affable decisions making um effective decisions making decisions that will change um organizations fortune from um good to great and from good to better and all those so it is very important to be able to understand this topic and also practically use it. All right, so today we are going to deal with um, uh, the demand for resources, the demand for resources. That's what we're gonna be dealing with. And um, I know you might have read about it a little in the course of the week. So let me bring the slides up quickly and then we're gonna go through this. And again, feel free to just interrupt me when you have a question. Moving forward in um, with the slides, just feel free to interrupt me and I'll be able to support you along the line. Um, good. I'm not sure if you're able to see my slide yet. Okay. So that's what we're going to have today. 
that is um, the demand for resources. Demand for resources. Um, and then from the day, like I said, no matter where you are, no matter what country you find yourself, no matter where you find yourself being an employee, being an, an entrepreneur, whatever it is, you need to make some sort of decisions. And guess what? The basic reason why we do study economics makes it very important to be able to understand this course. Why? Choice and scarcity becomes very, very important in everything you do. And as a result, in business, you need to base on this kind of decisions to be able to do effectively make that kind of um, decision that will be able to um, help the company either to increase their productivity or increase their revenue or to save the little that they have or to make some sort of gains on whatever they produce. This is the project. This is the course. This is the topic that will be able to um, support you in doing that. Okay. So the, the basic um, course or the basic reason for studying economics, which is um, scarcity and choice, make it possible and make it so important, important for you to understand this demand for resources as well. Good. So let's see what we have been um, for this particular topic. By the end of the day, what are we um, projecting to go home with? What are we projecting to come out from the class with? At the end of the day, we are expecting that you should be able to calculate the marginal revenue product um, by the end of this section. Again, we have seen this in some sessions of the courses that we have taken which is um, some of the topics that we have taken up previously. So calculating um, marginal revenue product shouldn't be a problem as we have been able to um, calculate marginal product, we've been able to calculate marginal revenue and it have similar, um, similar cost of treatment, all right? Again, be able to calculate what we term as the marginal revenue cost, should be able to describe the derived demand for resources, okay? To be able to determine the optimal resource utilization using marginal revenue product and then marginal resource cost analysis. We should be able to do that. And finally, we should be able to predict how a change in a determinant of resource demand affects the demand for a resource, okay? Should be able to predict how a change in a demand of resource, okay, affects the demand for a resource. That is our projected goals. Good. Now, as usual, these topics or the subtopics um, will always um, commensurate with our goals. So that's what we have over here. That is the demand for resources topics. So now what we have as um, marginal revenue product, when we say marginal revenue product, what is that? What is marginal revenue product? Okay, marginal revenue product. Marginal product, even what, what, what is marginal product? And then marginal revenue product. Marginal product is something that we have known in the past. We have calculated that in the past. That is um, marginal revenue. Um, that is, is the change in total um, product, okay? When another resource is added to the production mix. This is something we, we have, this is a previous knowledge that we have already, okay? That is um, the change in total product, when another resource, okay, is added to the product mix, okay? So when we talk about the marginal revenue product, what are we talking about? In the past, I've always mentioned to you that the clue for marginal is what? Just adding up additional, okay? It's an additional. So we are talking about just additional resource employed 
okay, multiplied by the price of maybe additional unit of any output that we are dealing with, okay? That is what we term as marginal revenue product. Good, so by definition, is the additional revenue generated as a result of utilizing one more unit of a variable resource. Yes, when we talk about this, you should remember something about diminishing marginal returns. You should remember something about diminishing marginal utility. You should remember something about how an organization will continue to produce or not, okay, based on additional um, cost, additional, um, um, uh, what we call it, raw materials and all those things. This is what we are trying to arrive at. So by definition is the additional revenue generated as a result of utilizing one more unit of a variable resource. And that could be what? It could be a land, it could be, a, uh, sorry, it could be a labor or capital and et cetera, okay? So marginal revenue products, and it can also be calculated as you can see um, on your screen. Change in total revenue divided by change in quantity of the resource. Good. So um, on your shot, you also see um, the marginal revenue product um, in a schedule over there. You will see that um, we have labor, we have total product, we have marginal product, we have product price, we have total revenue and marginal revenue product. How an increase in an employee, or sorry, an increase in labor will affect the marginal product, uh, sorry, total revenue and its marginal revenue product is what we are trying to deal with. An increase in, a lab, in the labor, what would that um, cost? What would be the effect, okay? If uh, maybe you have two um, employees and you are producing maybe five um, pieces of bottles. Well, if you want to produce maybe uh, 20 pieces of bottles, what would be the effect of an additional um, uh, employee or an additional labor? This is what we are trying to talk about. This is what we are trying to put across, okay? So at the end of the day, you could see on your screen that um, the price for the product was what? Four cities, uh, sorry, $4, and it's gonna be across board. All right, $4 across board. And at the labor one, you could see that the total product was 100 and the marginal product was 100 as well. And it's going to be what? 100 multiplied by the product, product price, which is going to be four, four, $4. At the end of the day, we have $400 to be our what? Our total product, okay? Again, when we move for, forward to the marginal revenue product, you see that it is generating what? 400. When they bring on board additional um, um, employee, okay? What are we experiencing, okay? The total product was 150, okay? And then the marginal product decreased to um, 50. When we multiply this, we uh, by four dollars, we're gonna get what six hundred dollars, which is the total revenue. Now, what is the second person's impact in terms of revenue? That is the marginal revenue. The second person's impact in terms of the marginal revenue is going to be what two hundred dollars. When you look at this, in the past, I've always said to you that the marginal um, revenue or the, this is marginal revenue product, marginal revenue can even reduce or can be um, go as low as into negative. And this is where you have to think as a manager, you have to think as a leader. When do I stop, okay? When do I stop adding up um, in terms of cost, in terms of products, in terms of um, employees? These are all costs. When do I stop? When do I put in more? to be able to increase our marginal revenue. 
this is the kind of decision we are thinking about this morning. And this is what we are putting across. So when we employ the third person or put in the third person, the total product went, should, should up to what? 175, okay? That is the quantity. At the end of the day, the marginal product decreased to what? 25. When we try to get the, um, the, the total revenue, we're going to get what? 700. Now, what is the impact of the third person that we employed? This third person only increased our re marginal revenue by what? $100. Okay? When we move to the fourth person, you will see the impact that he only increased our marginal revenue by what? $60. And same applies to the fifth person. This is where a manager or leader or a project manager should be able to sit down and see the impact, the overall impact of what is coming in as against what is being spent or vis-a-vis -vis against what is being spent. Then you make that decision that, hey, uh, maybe after employee number three, I need not to employ more because what I'm gaining is lesser than what I'm putting in. And this is what we are talking about. This is what we are all trying to put across. If you do have any question, please feel free to um, just um, alert me. Thank you. So that is um, the marginal um, revenue product. Now we do have a question on your screen. Which of the following statements does not describe marginal revenue product? Which of the following statements does not Okay, it does not describe marginal revenue product. A, it equals marginal product multiplied by price. Is that what we are talking about? Is that the definition? No. It equals the change in total revenue from an additional unit of output produced by an additional unit of resource employed. Are we dealing with that? No. Again, it illustrates the demand curve for a resource. Are we dealing with that? At the end of the day, this will not stand the, the test of time. Therefore, the D will tell us that it equals the change in total cost from an additional unit of output produced by an additional unit of resource employed. This, is, this has been our original definition, and this is what we've been talking about in the past five to 10 minutes. I hope somebody is following. Good. Now, let's see. Marginal revenue cost. Yep, this also have a similar concept as compared to what we have just discussed marginal revenue cost okay by definition you also know that at the end of the day this is the cost marginal the additional cost incurred okay the additional cost incurred in whatever um um we 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 aspire to do or whatever we produce whatever we're doing okay the marginal resource cost the cost involved in um, whatever we are doing, the additional, whatever is being added on, all right? Um, so now that is what we term as um, the resource payment name. At the end of the day, these resource have names. What are they? In the past, we did mention that we have land, we have labor, we have capital, we have the entrepreneurial ability. Yes, we do have that. We have all these. How do we, at the end of the day, get um, um, benefit out of all these things? If I have a land, what do I gain out of my land? Okay. I am a labor. I have strength to work for you. How do I get paid? All right. This is how these resources get, um, um, re let me say, reinvest or let me say um, some sort of remuneration or um, whatever benefit they receive out of what they have, all right? So a land will always generate what? Rent. A land will generate rent. 
um, labor will generate um, wages, capital will generate interest, and then the entrepreneurial ability will generate profit and loss. All right, that is what we do have as um, resource payment name, resource payment name. Good. So the marginal resource cost, like I said earlier on before this slide, is the additional cost incurred as a result of utilizing one more unit of a variable resource, whatever we are doing with it, whatever, being a land or capital, whatever it is. So just similar to the previous one, which was the marginal um, revenue um, product, this is the cost and it is defined or it is calculated as change in total revenue um, cost divided by change in quantity of the resource. Change in quantity of the resource. Good. Now, let's see. At the end of the day, marginal resource cost, marginal resource cost. With the same knowledge coming back from um, our marginal resource um, product, adding up um, maybe one labor, what is the impact? Because at the end of the day, you're gonna measure the two. You, you, you're gonna measure the revenue you are receiving from adding on one employee vis-a-vis -vis the cost before you can do what? Make the decision. So at the end of the day, this marginal revenue, um, resource, marginal resource cost and marginal revenue um, product have to be able to at least agree or they should be able to come into some sort of agreement that makes sense to the decision maker, okay? So when you add on one labor or additional labor, what is its impact in terms of cost? This is what we are trying to put across. When you add additional two labors, what is its impact, okay? On the cost of maybe manufacturing or producing whatever you do, okay? This is what we are trying to put across. So when you look at the schedule right on your screen, you will see that at labor one, they were doing what? Experiencing a total cost of what? $60, okay? And the marginal revenue cost is $60. At labor two, by employing an additional labor, okay, they are going to experience what? A total labor cost of $120. This additional labor that they are putting in, huh? this additional labor they are putting in, what is its additional cost? When you look at the marginal resource cost, it is 60. What does that tell you as a businessman? Does it mean we can keep on putting in more employees to be able to improve whatever we have? Possibly yes, because it doesn't increase our cost. It means our marginal cost is okay. So um, in making decisions, just like um, the same concept with marginal revenue and marginal cost, if the marginal revenue product, okay, is, um, is greater or equal to the marginal revenue cost, yes, we're still gonna keep working. We're still gonna keep producing, okay? Just like our concept in marginal revenue and marginal cost. So when we get to the graph, wherever you see these two coming into play, coming into agreement, meeting each other, the point that this marginal revenue cost and marginal revenue product meet, that makes it optimal, that makes it efficient. And this is what we are talking about. So putting in two, three, and four um, employees, you still realize that although the organization is experiencing a total labor cost, of 240, 300, the marginal revenue, uh, sorry, resource cost does not really affect it. Okay? And this is what we are trying to put across. Okay. Now, we do have a question over here too. What does that say? 
Is somebody going to uh, um, bail us after talking for a little while? I need somebody to also help us. Who can read this question for us? Are we in class? Yes, sir. Good. Can somebody help us here? You read the question, somebody answers. Okay. Yeah. So the quiz question is that uh, which of the following statements uh, describes marginal resource cost? Thank you, um, Masoon. Just, just leave it there for us. We want to make sure okay. people know what we are saying. Can somebody help us? I believe the answer is A. Oh, Noren. The answer is A. Um, can you read it out? It equals the change in total cost from an additional unit of output produced by an additional unit of resource employed. Thank you, Noran. Are we all in agreement with what Noran said? The answer is A. Any challenger? Okay, I will take your silence to be that you are in agreement. So this is what we have been talking about in the last a couple of minutes. By definition, okay, at the end of the day, it equals the change in the total cost from an additional unit of output produced by an additional unit of what? Resource employed. So simple. And always, and always, when you, you get this kind of questions in the examination room, just look at the question. Are we dealing with resource, uh, sorry, marginal resource cost? or we are dealing with marginal revenue, um, uh, marginal um, revenue product, okay? At the end of the day, this is the two things you have to look at because sometimes what I do is I just twist the answers a little bit and people will still go for the wrong ones, you know? At the end of the day, you don't have to go for an answer with this A telling us that it's what? marginal revenue product we're not talking about marginal revenue product here okay so this is what we have to also um, pay attention all the time when we are taking our uh, quizzes and the impending exams okay um, now we got to talk about what the resource demand okay resource demand the demand for resources what is is um this kind of demand is 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 dependent Okay, it's dependent. Um, and, and the book did mention um, something. It says what is, um, it's a derived demand. Okay, it's a derived demand. So resource demand or the demand for resource is a derived demand. It means it is dependent. Okay, it is dependent. Um, if we say something is dependent, we know what it is. You, they derive it from somewhere. They depend on it. So they depend on the demand of for goods and services and resources to be able to help the product. Without it, they cannot be able to do what function. So the demand for resources, that is what we have. Okay. Um, so on your chart, what do we have? We have this demand curve over here. What are they telling us? At the end of the day, they are telling us that. <laughs> Um, the marginal revenue product, okay? The marginal revenue product. This is how it's going to slope, okay? It slopes just like what? Every other demand curve, downward from left to right. And you can see it right there. An increase in the labor rate is going to cause a decrease in what? In the quantity of labor one will employ. And this is going to cause the effect, okay? of the demand curve sloping from left to right, all right? That's a general or a simple demand curve that you're going to see um, whenever you are dealing with demand. So let's move on. Good. So the demand for labor, the demand for labor, at the end of the day, I did mention something um, some few minutes ago, what you have to think about as a businessman is, 
I am producing pens. Okay? I am producing pens. So far as I'm making more than what I'm producing or equivalent to what I am spending, I'm still in business. This graph over here is telling us the same. Wherever you see that the marginal product is coming into contact with the marginal revenue cost, it means we are good. We did explain this in the past under productions and I think um, perfect um, competitive market. We did explain this. So wherever you see this um, MRP, which is marginal revenue products coming into contact or um, where they meet, which is marginal revenue product and marginal revenue cost, it means we are okay or business is okay under production and they gonna be able to keep producing, okay? Um, so wherever they intersect or wherever they meet, that intersection, exactly where they meet, is what we term as, um, um, I think um, it's um, optima, optimum level, okay? That's, it's, we're going to get to that level as well. So at the end of the day, this is what we have to think about, um, whether it is good or it's not. Okay, there we go. That's the topic we are looking for. Optimal resource utilization. How efficient, how efficient can we use our, our, our resources? How efficient can we use our resources? If you're a businessman, if you are a manager, you are a leader, you are a CEO, you are in charge of an organization, how efficient do you utilize your resources okay when we started with demand and supply we always had that um caution that's all things being equal all things being equal and i remember i cited um this gloves production and there was also again um some sort of real estate buildings that we were talking about that people were trying to argue if the, um, the, 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 uh, the investors will continue to invest more if they are making more money. Again, all things being equal, you need to make sure that as a leader, as a resource personnel, as an organizational uh, um, um, head, you have to take decisions that will help the organization make an impact both um, on the human resource and at the same time financially and this is why you need to think through this kind of um, decisions okay so how do we make our purchases or our way of spending more efficient and this is what we are dealing with in this in this this course and that is um, optimal resource utilization optimal resource utilization at the end of the day it will base on this for an organized uh, an organization to say hey we want to hire an additional um we want to hire an additional employee and again let me even put it this way at the end of your program what you have in your head will determine okay will determine what you are going to get out there if you want to establish your own business, what knowledge have you acquired? I always tell friends and colleagues that it doesn't matter the university that you go. It doesn't matter the kind of school you go. It's about what comes out of your head, the impact you are able to make with the knowledge that you have acquired. It doesn't matter how you speak. It's about the knowledge. It's about how you practically able to you are, you are able to practically use the knowledge acquired in, in school and in class. This is what I always try to preach to my students, okay? I want to encourage you for you to know that if you are able to assimilate what we are discussing here, if you are able to put what we are discussing here into practice, listen, somebody who is in those Ivy schools cannot compete you. 
It's about putting what you are learning into play. There is no other books out there. There is no different textbooks out there. There is no other technology out there but what you are able to put in. And guess what? Is the det determination, is the perseverance, is the resilience. I see people who are really prepared to at least make some sort of impact in this class. And I see people who are also trying to do what? Make sure that they get out of this class with something good. This is the kind of morale I always want to give what? My students, all right? Because at the end of the day, what are you gaining out of the tuition you are paying? What are you gaining? Assuming you graduate today and you're unable to find any sort of employment, what would you do? You have learned so many things. You have gone through so many practical knowledge um, um, in the class, although it's theoretical. Can you put it into practical? Can you put it into play? Can you make sure something happens? This is what we are talking about. So at the end of the day, what you are going to get out there will depend on what is coming out from your head. What, how you will be able to differentiate yourself from your colleagues. Again, no matter what it is, somebody will go to the Ivy schools. Probably me and you might not have the money because we're not coming from the family whereby they, they hold some money there for us to use it for education. But we struggle to be able to go through the educational ladder. But at the end of the day, you should be able to acquire the knowledge and make sure that that knowledge you have acquired is put in into practice. So I always say that no matter what university you go, I can challenge you. When it comes to the books, we'll sit down. When it comes to practical aspect of it, yes, we will be able to deal with it. Probably somebody might say, he doesn't speak like we speak, but I will be able to deal with it. And this is the confidence I want to give students. This is the confidence I want to give you. When you get out there, you don't look at anything, but you look at what you'll be able to put on the desk what you'll be able to put on the table. When you are going to negotiate for your salary, you put this kind of attitude on the table. You deliver for people to see that, yes, he'll be able to do what? Deliver. Many a times, employees will give you, employers, I mean, will give you the opportunity to do what? To at least show them what you can do. If they give you the opportunity, are you able to demonstrate? Are you able to at least show to them that yes this i can i can be able to produce when this uh, uh kind of opportunity is given to me so all that we are trying to say is make sure you acquire something from this class not any other class but this class no matter what you do in life no matter where you find yourself in life you will need economics you will need economics to make your decisions and effective decisions. And I will always urge you to bring your mind back into this class. When you are out of this class, remember this class, remember the topics, visit those topics and use it when you are doing your practical aspects of life or when you go through your practical instances in um, your organizations, use that. And it's going to uh, really um, help you make some sort of good decisions. So all we are trying to talk about today, all we are trying to put across today is making good decisions. And we are going to make these decisions based on what? Some sound, optimal, efficient utilization of what we have, efficient utilizations of resources. Assuming I have $20, okay? I have $20 as, as an individual, okay? I want to maybe go and rent an apartment. The apartment costs probably um, $10, $20, and $30. Well, if you do rent the apartment, you might need something to feed yourself. You might be paying bills. What is going to influence your judgment? How would you make this kind of decisions? Would you go for the $15 apartment and be very limited in resources? Would you go for the $10 apartment and be a little bit flexible in your resource uh, 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 utilization? This is how individually you apply economics to yourself. 
And also you take the same to your employment or to your um, organizations or your own um, um, business that you might have established, which I know at the end of the day, a lot of you are going to enter into entrepreneurship and um, I believe you're gonna go far. Please just press the button, just press my button right there if you have any question and I'll be able to get to you. So that's what we have. Now we do have this question on your screen and I need um, another support here. Um, if somebody can help us, they said what? They say firms achieve the optimal resource utilization where there is something I mentioned earlier on. So that efficiency will be achieved at what point on the 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 graph? At what point would that efficiency or would that um, 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 robust um, ness of what we do be achieved? Okay, that is um, a when marginal revenue is equivalent to marginal cost. Okay, when um, marginal revenue is less, uh, sorry, greater than uh, marginal cost. When marginal revenue product is greater than marginal revenue cost. So what is it? Can somebody help us over here? It's D. Is D. I think I heard Rodas, right? Yes, yes. Thank you, Rodas. Um, that is when marginal revenue product is equivalent. Thank you, Sarah. When marginal revenue product is equivalent to marginal revenue cost, okay, it means we have achieved that optimal. We have achieved that efficiency. In other words, we would have been saying what? Equilibrium, right? <laughs> So that is what we do have. So when we see that MRP, which is the marginal revenue product, equal in um, uh, uh, or equivalent to the marginal revenue cost, we say that we have achieved or the firm has achieved the optimal resource utilization. I hope we are all clear with that. Good. So let's move forward. Now, at the end of the day, what do we have? The determinants of resource demand. The determinants of resource demand. What actually um, causes um, that kind of change? What causes that? Whether it's going to be shoot, uh, it's going to uh, move to the left or shoot to the right. What is the impact? How does this come as a, as a result of the resource that we have? How does this um, um, resource um, have that kind of effects? So now that's what we have. There are three determinants for resource demand. There are three determinants, okay? And as usual, you have the demand for the good or service that resource is used to produce. This determine that, okay? We have the productivity. And also we have the price of another resource. The price of another resource. Does this uh, uh, um, ring a bell in your ears? The price of another resource. What are they trying to tell us here? Can somebody tell us? Is somebody in class? The price of another resource. Uh, what is that? It can be a substitution, a substitution effect or complementary effect. Thank you, Rodas. It means you are alive. Rodas is alive. Thank you. So we are just asking for the substitutes. Okay, what substitutes can this uh, um, uh, affect the kind of um, um, the resource demand? Okay, that is what I'm trying to ask, or that is what I'm just asking for. All right, so at the end of the day, we have the three determinants and let's go in to find out what they do for us and their impact, okay? So the demand for the good or service, that resource is used to produce. At the end of the day, this is going to cause a change in the resource, okay? It's going to cause a change. 
in the resource or the resource they demand. So why are we saying that? The demand for the good or services that the resource is used to produce. Assuming we are producing maybe cell phone, what do we use in producing cell phone? Are we gonna need chips? Are we gonna need sensors? No matter what we need, are we gonna need uh, maybe skateboards to be able to program whatever it is? This is going to cause an increase or a decrease in what we produce depending on its demand. So the demand for the goods or services that the resource is being used to produce will cause that. So if we need more pens, this increase in the pens that we need is going to cause an additional or an increase in the raw materials we use in producing the pens. I hope somebody is following. So at the end of the day, the demand for the goods or services that the resource is used to produce will cause a change in the resource demand. Good. Let's see what it is. Now, um, what is this? Um, derived demand, right? Derived demand. What does that mean? By definition, a type of demand specific to resources that occurs as a result of the demand for the goods and services produced by those resources. I hope somebody is, is, is following me. To understand how the demand for a good or service is used to produce can impact the demand for that resource. We need to consider the concept of that derived demand. We need to do that, okay? Because it is what? It is, uh, uh, it is dependent or like the, 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 the word or the, like it, it, the, 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 the definition or whatever it is over there. Derived demand is dependent, is based on whatever, okay? So the more you produce, the more you need that kind of um, um, primary product or resource to be able to do what? Continue producing. Okay. I hope somebody is following. So demand, um, demand, uh, sorry, derived demand process. Derived demand process. If demand for a good increases, what happened to the price? The price will increase, right? At the end of the day, we'll be looking for it. All things being equal, me and you, everybody want to buy a new phone, specifically, maybe the new um, um, iPhone in town. Everybody wants it. Well, at the end of the day, that demand and supply forces is going to cause an increase in what? In the price. So if demand for a good increase, all things being equal, the price will increase. I hope we are in good shape. If the price of a product increases, what happens to the total revenue? At the end of the day, assuming constant, that is all things being equal, increasing quantity, what happens? The total revenue will increase. It will increase automatically. All things being equal, if the product of if the price of a product increases, what happens to the total revenue? Okay, we, we have been selling 50, 50 pieces of the phone at maybe $20, and all of a sudden the price shoot to maybe $30. We're still selling at 50 pieces. If we are selling at 50 pieces, we are having an additional $10 per each piece that we do sell. And this is going to cause the, um, um, the total revenue to increase, all things being equal because there are other things that comes into play, okay? Along the line, there are some taxes we're gonna be paying that will not just, um, uh, we cannot just uh, say that at the end of the day, the total revenue is just straightforward. No, we will be able to make some sort of um, deductions here and there. So all things being equal, when there is an increase in the price of a product, there will be what? 
an increase in the total revenue, all things being equal. Good. Now, if total revenue increases, what happens to the marginal revenue product? What happens to the marginal revenue product? We all know and we all understand what Soteros Paribus means. Soteros Paribus, all things being equal, all other things remaining constant. Soteros Paribus, okay? When a total revenue increases, all things being equal, what happens to the marginal revenue product? It will increase. It will increase. I hope somebody is with me here. Again, if the marginal revenue product increases, what happens to the demand for the resource? The demand for the resource will increase automatically. Ceteris paribus, or all things being equal, all other things remaining constant. Please um, just um, uh, let me if you have any question or there's something you do not understand. All right, please. So effects of a change in demand for a product that labor produces. What is the effect? What is the effect? That's what we just explained. At the end of the day, it's going to cause it to shift to the right or the left. When there is an increase, it's going to, when there is an increase in the price or the, uh, the wage, it's going to cause what? A decrease in the, in the, in the um, labor quantity. There is an, uh, there is a, when there is a reduction in the, in the, um, in the wage or the price, there's going to be an increase. Okay. To the quantity of the labor. All right. So, a rightward shift is an increase, while a leftward shift is a decrease. I hope we are all on board with that. So now, let's talk about the um, the determinant, the third one, which is um, um, productivity, right? <laughs> productivity. At the end of the day, what we get out of that resource can also, sorry, our productivity can also cause an increase in the resource that we demand. Okay, our productivity, the level of production that we are making will cause that resource we need in doing that production to increase. Okay, it's, it's just like the productivity of the resource and how it changes the demand. No matter what it is, you're going to need extra resources or raw materials to be able to finish your productions. Good. So let's see what we have here. <coughs> Sorry. Higher productivity. So he says um, higher productivity. The productivity... <coughs> Um, more use of other resources, okay? More use of other resources. What does that mean? What does that mean? The productivity of a, of a resource is affected possibly when we do what? When we use more of, of other resources, okay? The higher the quantities of other resources are used with it, okay? The higher other resources or the greater other resources are being used, okay? This is when we get what? The productivity of resources is affected positively or is it helps to increase that kind of productivity. Better quality, okay? Better quality, the better quality. The quality of production increases based on what? The better quality. You have a lot of people chasing your product because of what? Quality. In the past, um, when we were doing some discussion, um, I asked for people to give us um, some strategy to be able to penetrate the market, um, being a, a marketing officer. Yes, your product, people can see it to be quality. When you try to do what? Put something like, oh, maybe we'll give um, 20 years warranty when you buy our product. They have some sort of peace of mind. They feel like, hey, this product, 
It's of quality. That's why the, pro, pro, uh, the producer or the manufacturer is doing what? Giving us a warranty. Okay. Again, there will be an increase in um, the kind of production when the technology that we use improves. Okay. When technology takes place in whatever production that you, you, you do, it is going to cause an increase. Okay. Or it's going to increase the productivity. And that is what um, we do have. That is what we do have. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. He says higher productivity and what? And demand. Higher productivity and demand. If a resource is more productive, that by definition means its marginal, its marginal product has increased. Okay. If a resource is more productive, that by definition, it means that its marginal product has increased. Okay. So at the end of the day, when you have that kind of um, um, <clears throat> uh, more product, uh, yeah, if, if a resource is more product productive, that means um, you don't, although you, you are using more of the product, you are gaining more out of it. Okay. I don't know if I make sense to someone. Okay. It means marginal product has increased. You're requesting for more, you're producing at a higher productivity. So at the end of the day, you might spend twenty dollars, okay, in producing hundred pieces of the of the of the um, phones that you are producing. How do you see that? What were you using in the past without technology? What were you using, okay, without technology, without quality? What were you producing without technology? What were you producing? At what um, rate? At what capacity were you producing? You see, that's why at a point. Technology will also come to um, come to um, um, impact whatever we do in in business, and it has already established itself. Okay, that without technology, it's 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 going to affect your 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 business. So somebody who will be uh, producing um, manually, and you'll be doing that maybe every five hours. You have to go and sit down and rest. Somebody has automated the whole. Um, 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 manufacturing um, um, firm. And all that they do is somebody will be sitting behind a computer or somebody will be at the a, at a firm just monitoring that maybe um, some of the rows, the, the packages might not fall off or whatever it is. You know, at the end of the day, the person producing manually, what do you think is going to happen? One, you are spending more strength, more energy, okay, in your production by trying to do what? A physical uh, um, security man, watching your product, trying to arrange your product manually by yourself. But the person who has put in, in automation will just take it easy, will be resting, will be doing things at ease. And again, will be able to employ less or will be able to um, um, spend less, but be able to do what? Recoup more. And this is what we are talking about. So if marginal product goes up, for each unit of input, what happens to the total product at each level of input used? The total product at each unit has also that's what increased, has also that's what increased. And this is what we are trying to put across. Good. Now, higher productivity and what? Demand, we are still on that higher productivity and what? Demand. If total product increases, what happens to the revenue or the total revenue? Again, all things being equal, Ceteris Paribus, all things being equal, the total revenue will do what? It will increase. Please just make note of these simple, simple um, possible questions that at the end of the day, I will expect that you get it. You don't waste time on that. So all things being equal, if the total product increases, yes, the total revenue will do what? Will increase. And again, if total revenue increases, what happens to the marginal revenue product 
marginal revenue product will do what? Increase. And then finally, if the marginal revenue product increases, what happens to the demand for the resources? Whoa, yes, they will demand more. Okay, so the demand will increase. The demand will increase. Good. So now what do we have? The effects of a change in resource productivity. Effects of a change in resource productivity. So like I said earlier on, the same thing will apply here. On your screen, you will see that when there is a change, okay, in um, the wage rate or, uh, or the price, let's say wage rate as it's on, the, on your screen. When there is a change in the wage rate, which is an increase in the wage rate, what will happen to the labor? The quality, uh, sorry, the quantity of labor will go down, okay? When there is an increase in the wage rate, because you need to spend more to produce, at the end of the day, are you making an efficient or effective decision? So when there is an increase in the wage rate, all things in being equal, it is going to cause the quantity of labor to reduce. Same applies to um, the second chart, okay? When there is an, a decrease, okay, in the... Um, when there, is an, a when there is a decrease in the price, it is going to cause what? The quantity of labor to increase. It's going to cause the quantity of labor to increase, okay? And um, that is what we do have over there. That is what we do have over there. So if, if, workers, um, <clears throat> if workers say experience, um, um, I don't know how to even put it. For example, your, your, your workers, <clears throat> for some reason, like I explained with the automation, have experienced some sort of training. They've acquired more knowledge. You've been to school, like you and um, um, the entire class. You've acquired some sort of special knowledge that your colleagues at your workplace doesn't have. What does that translate into? Maybe you will bring in technology that will cause your employer to reduce your, um, what we call it, will in, would reduce um, your, your, the amount of um, staff that you have. Probably you are able to do the work of maybe three or four people. What happened? So a good example is used, okay? Whenever <laughs> um, somebody acquires knowledge or there is an, some, some sort of automation putting in place to be able to increase and productivity, okay? And that is what I explained to you. There will be an increase and there will be a decrease in demand. Good. The third, which is the determinant for resource demand, the price of another resource. This is what Ruth has told us, the price of another resource, okay? At the end of the day, how does the price of another resource affect the, the resource demand or the demand for the resource? How does the price of another resource affect it? Okay, all things being equal, okay? If I'm producing, what is it? If I'm, if I'm a Coca-Cola producer and I'm using cola, okay, to do the production and all of a sudden, Cola is up there, but there are other products, the other resources that I will be able to use to produce or to come or arrive at the same product, but with a cheaper price. What would you do? Would that influence your decision? If so, would that cause the demand, the resource for demand to change? Yes, of course. At the end of the day, you are going to shift in your kind of um, purchasing uh, um, um, direction from one product to the other. So the price of another resource will cause um, the resource demand to also change. All right, so now that is what we have. That is the substitute. So goods, services, or resources that are viewed as replacement for another, okay? That's are viewed as replacement for another. 
So what can we say it's, it's, a, it's a substitute? Any examples? I need substitute goods. Somebody tell me one. I don't want to hear somebody tell me we have toothpaste and then um, we have um, close up. Substitute products. Hello. Hi. Yes. Uh, uh, instead of using iPhone, I will use Samsung. Oh, okay. That's good. So Samsung and iPhone. Good. So they are all substitute products. Good. Can somebody tell me what, what other substitute product you've been using? Again, I don't want to hear somebody say pep student and then toothpaste. Anybody? Good, good. Thank you, I'll add. Um, Pepsi and Coca-Cola. That's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, I'll add. Oh, what are you doing, Sarah? What are you doing? You and Awad, what do you want to do? You want to give me chicken or meat? This is what I was trying to say. Um, I'm Sarah. Chicken and meat, are they substitutes? I love chicken, but I don't know what other meat you want to um, use as a form of substitute. But um, I, lo I love that Awad. You know, oh, come on, now what? Don't do that. We are in class. Don't do that. I hope nobody sees what our word writes. Um, when we finish, you know what? When we finish the class, just meet me by the diner, our word. You know, that would be very simple. Yeah, meet me by the diner and see how much you're going to spend in coming to this place. So thank you, by the way, our word. So this is what we are trying to say, substitutes substitute if we don't have this what can we use to replace it okay well when we were doing our basic english um education okay when we're doing that we call something pronouns okay what do we use pronouns for we use pronouns in place of what nouns am i right if i do remember my english right okay so um it is it, it's, it's my name is Sam. They can do what? Say he, okay? But at the end of the day, we are referring to the same uh, male um, person. I, I hope we, are, we understand what I, uh, we are trying to put across. So substitute is just in the same concept. If I don't have chicken, probably I can get beef, right? If I don't have beef, maybe if the price of beef shoot up, I can still enjoy chicken. All right, that is what I'm trying to put across. Award loves uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola. So probably, um, uh, you know, they are both competitors. At the end of the day, Coca-Cola will shoot the price and we will enjoy Pepsi. I do, uh, I do the same too, you know. So this is what I'm trying to say. And the previous slide is telling us that it is going to cause a change. Whenever there is, um, there is uh, a substitute, it affects, okay, the resource demand. It affects the resource demand. As a producer, you think that way. So whenever you are in production, you look at your options. What can I use in place of this? In, term, in, in case there is a problem over here um, with this kind of supplier, can I get another supply from this kind of supplier? So you can be able to at least put plans in place so that all the time you will be able to at least gain or you will be able to at least um, make that kind of uh, 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 not, let me say, uh, 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 at, at, you run at, uh, at optimal, okay? You run at optimal or at an efficient manner. In that case, all the time, your business will be in shape. But if you want to put your eyes, somebody will say you want to put all your eggs in one box. If that one box falls down and the eggs breaks, that's it. So in business, you think like that. There should be substitute for what you do. And whenever you need it, you tap into it. Any question? Any suggestion? Any, any question? Any suggestion? 
Is somebody in class? Thank you, no questions. Thank you, Noran. All right, so the price of a substitute increases when there is what? Other replacement resources are more expensive. So you do what? You switch to this resource. So substitute resource price increase. And then what? The resource demand will do what? Increase. All right? And that is exactly what we are talking about. So um, I hope somebody is getting this. So when you increase this, uh, whatever uh, uh, product I'm using, I'm going to shift to the other product. And it's going to cause what? The resource demand to increase. So price of a substitute increases. What happens? Other replacement resources are less expensive. What would we do? Switch away from these resources. Okay? That is what we are trying to put across. So at the end of the day, like I said, have a plan. Go in with a plan as a businessman. Do not just always try to have one kind of supplier or uh, have one, one goal or be at one particular point in time. Just try to take a couple of stuff at the same time so that you will be able to flourish all the time. If you go into farming and you're a small farmer, what do you do? You cannot just uh, base your farming on one particular um, product and assuming it doesn't do well or that particular um, product crash, what do you do? So you see the small farmers trying to um, um, plant or grow multiple um, products or if it is, um, Animal farming, you see, they might be rearing more than one or two animals just to be able to at least um, have a penetration into the market. So that is what it is. At the end of the day, if other replacement resources are less expensive, I will switch. Just like every other um, 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 normal human being in business. That's what it is. Good. Now, let's see. So, compliments. By definition, they are goods, services, or resources that are used or consumed with one another. Any example? I need examples of um, compliments. Can somebody give me example of compliments? Any example? Um, continue, continue, Nora. Nora, go ahead. A camera and the memory card. Camera and memory card. Oh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, 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 gone are the days uh, we use camera and memory card uh, like um, every day. Good. So, camera and memory card. Thank you. You will need that because when your memory is full, the pictures have to be what? Uploaded onto your memory. Good job. Thank you. Camera and memory card. Next. Coffee and sugar. Oh, do you take that often? No, no, not really. I don't drink. Um, I don't use sugar when oh, I drink you don't coffee. Use sugar. Okay. <laughs> coffee and sugar. Yes, they are complement. Yes. Um, no matter what it is, unless you're gonna put milk, um, you have um sugar going with that. Coffee and sugar. Thank you, Rodas. Anybody else? Anybody else? We need compliments. Award, I think award in the chat box said uh, milk and cereal. Award, milk and cereal. That's right. That's right. Thank you, award. Uh, thank you, Rodas. Milk and cereal. Yeah, you can always have that um, together. All right. So that is what we have. I just want everybody to understand practically what compliments are. If you get this in your exams and at the end of the day, you are unable to differentiate between what compliments are, that is your own issue because 
if it is wrong, you say it here and we'll be able to tell you, oh, no, correct the other one. But if you keep quiet, if you keep mute, you don't say it, you feel like it's okay, probably what Rodas, Nora, and Awad said might not be there. And you have to figure it out. All right? So that is compliments. And that's what we have for you. So they are good services or resources that are used, okay, um, or consumed with one another. All right? Good. So that is um, compliments for you. <coughs> now, let's try to talk about the price of a compliment and its effects. The price of compliments and its effects. So what happens to um, the prices of an, a compliment? Okay. Compliment resource price increase. Other resources used with this resource are more expensive. What do we do? We switch, run away from this resource. We run away. Okay. So at the end of the day, what will be a practical example that we can put over here? Assuming we are dealing with coffee and milk. What will be the practical example? Coffee and cream. Okay. Coffee and cream. What about coffee and honey? Do we all eat honey? Do we all eat that? Some, I can see some are going here. Okay, so this is what we are trying to put across. At the end of the day, other resources used with these resources are more expensive. What would you do? A sound person like every other person else, will do what? Will switch and move to maybe the other uh, uh, um, resource, which might be far cheaper. So at the end of the day, I believe maybe honey will be cheaper for me in terms of sugar. Um, maybe um, cream will be cheaper for, for um, judling in terms of sugar. Anyway, somebody might even decide to do what? Boycott the entire what? Um, 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 uh, um, entire um, combo, okay, and go in for a different combo and say, oh, okay, why don't I get already mixed product, which is coffee and milk or sugar together, you know, and this is what we are trying to talk about. You will be, you will be forced to move to another resources. Am I making sense to anybody? Yes, you are. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Judlin. Good. So now let's look at um, what we do have over here too. This is not moving. Oh, okay. I didn't want to move. Oh, it moved to, okay, good. So again, when, okay, when other resources used with these resources are less expensive, they are less expensive, what would you do? It will cause people to do what? To move towards this resource, okay? They will move towards that because at the end of the day, they, they want to switch to that um, resource because it is cheaper or it's lesser than what they are currently using or what they've been using. And this will cause an impact or a change in their MRP at the end of the day. Okay. So that is um, a change or the price of um, a compliment and its effect. <clears throat> All right. Now we do have a question here. Let's see what we can do quickly about that. Which of the following scenarios will cause the demand curve for a resource to increase? Anybody?
Anybody? C. An increase C. in the price Ma of substitute. Monsoon is saying it's C. Well, I think it's A. Why is it C? Anybody? Not monsoon specifically. Do we all agree with monsoon that is C? Why is it that <clears throat> the decrease in the price of a substitute will not cause the demand curve to increase in terms of resources? Why? Anybody else? Good. Thank you, Ahmad. Ahmed, I see, I was, sorry. I see you, you opted for C as well. Why is it that a decrease in the price of a substitute will not cause the demand curve for a resource to increase? Why? Um, because the customers will shift to the, to the substitute because it has lower price than our resource, than the other resource. Okay. I appreciate that. Did somebody hear her? All things being equal, they will shift. Okay? All things being equal, they will shift. Just a normal and a, a sound person, like any every, every other person, no matter what it is, you're going to shift. Yes, we do have taste and preference. We have some people, they have some, some sort of, uh, depending on their culture, depending on their religion, they will say, no, this product, that's what we're going to be buying. We cannot change it. That is when you have more than enough in your pocket. But if you are like me and you make decisions just like every other person, you will definitely be forced to switch. And this will cause an increase, okay, in the price of a substitute. All right. Let's see what we have here. So the demand for a resource is described as what? The demand for a resource is described at what? E. The demand for a resource is described as what? B. E. B. B is, is described as a derived demand. That is Judlin, right? Um, I don't want Rodas to talk. Why is it termed as derived demand? Why? Somebody in class? Yes, I guess uh, the reason that the um, derived demand is defined as the demand um, for a good or service that make uh, a demand on the resources that perform this service or do this good, so it will be a derived demand. Okay. Anybody with a different um, explanation? Why is it a demand derived? Why do we say de derived demand? Anybody else? Why do we say derived demand? Anybody else? Nobody? Yeah, Clement, go ahead. Go ahead, Clement, you have the floor. Okay, again. I did mention that it is dependent, okay? It is dependent. They based on it, okay? Regardless of what you do, you are going to base on that resource to be able to do what? Do your productions, okay? So it's some sort of dependent, so it becomes derived. Without it, 
nothing can happen. Okay. Assuming you are you are you are a phone producer and you use plastic and whatever it is. Without it, can it be produced? No. You depend on it. Okay. You depend on it in one way or the other. Without it, that's the end of it, unless you have a substitute. Anyway, um, this is the end of today's section. I'm not sure if you have any question. There is something bothering you. Um, I'm yet to grade the um, the quiz 11 and then 12. Quiz 11 and 12 is yet to be graded. Soon as that is done, I'll shoot you an alert so that you check your grades to make sure that you are clean and everything is intact. Um, any question from here? Yes. Who, who, who is that? I think uh, it's been uh, about eight months I heard this voice. <laughs> What's going on, Clement? Is internet challenge, sir? Oh, internet challenge. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I understand you. Yeah, it's okay. okay. All right, sir. So I want to. Okay, so I want to find out. Um, uh, when, when you go through the the, the model, you will discover that there is an error of a duplication. Uh, there was one of the grades that duplicated itself there. I, I don't know if it will not add up uh, at the end of the term and serve as a minus to us. Was since the duplicate is showing F, F there. Um, what module is that? Um, I think uh, either on the, um, either as I meant four, either on work, uh, we did no work and quiz four or three, thereabouts. Then, mm. um, then, and also. Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, I think Wellington, it was quiz uh, five and uh, homework five. I'm not sure, but uh, the professor uh, told us that uh, it was an error and I think he will remove it from the grade. Okay, better because um, if not remove it, it will add up automatically and it will turn to be a negative. No, that's, that grade is, is going to be taken out. Yes, it's going to be taken out. All right. I think I did that already. I'm not sure if you are still seeing it on your end. Yes, I'm still seeing it on my end. You are still seeing it on your end. Yes, sir. Rodas, are you seeing the same? Uh, let me check it. OK. OK, I believe I, I corrected that. Um, a um, couple of weeks ago, but I will check on that as well. <laughs> Any issue again? <clears throat> like some of us that uh, and um, don't talk that? about your personal issue here because <laughs> when you talk about your personal issue here, I'm going to charge you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is fine. Um, I know you you missed one discussion. That one yes. is a penalty for not coming to class on time, you know? Yes. Then the second <laughs> one, too. It was, um, Which one again? The second and on the fifth. The fifth discussion and the second discussion. So I think you, I opened that one for you. No, it was not open. I was thinking the second will open. It was not open. So I couldn't submit. What is your availability? Anytime, uh, Wait, wait. Uh, uh, Clement, are you sure yes, anytime? Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the challenge I have, sir, at times you will open and I may not be able to. Like the last time you opened, my phone went blank. So I didn't get it. was the morning when it was almost time out. That's when I saw the message. So That's what I'm I, saying. Uh, in that case, anytime cannot work for you. Okay, sir. So what, okay. what is your availability? Um, you want to send me a test? I, I think I will do that, sir. Let, let's, okay. let, let me say on Tuesday, sir, after our exam on Monday. No, after the exams, I'm starting another class in another school. So I don't no, want not, to be... No, not, not that one. No. You know, this um, next tomorrow, after this Monday, oh, okay. I have, uh, another uh, exam. So on Tuesday okay. this week, before your exam. 
Okay. No, sir, will you include the one you've already got there, the two that I say is a punishment? That one is a punishment. Why, why? You don't want to take it the next time you register into the class quick, uh, as early as possible. Oh. You don't like uh, at least having a, a, a grade five, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> five points punishment. You don't like it? <clears throat> ask, ask Nora an award. They will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they already have enough, by the way. Um, that was just, um, um, by the way, we will, we will be able to do that. Um, just send me a test. I want to make sure that whatever we do on that Tuesday, you are okay and you will not miss it. Thank you, sir. No, that's fine. Uh, sir, it was corrected. On my end, it's uh, corrected. It's corrected. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. the duplicate. Uh, and uh, Awad has um, wrote something on the chat box. He's saying uh, there's one question I answered right in both attempts, yet it still shows a wrong answer. So yes. this happened to me as well. I exactly. think it was an error. Yes. Yes, it, for me too. Oh, now they are ganging up against me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fine. Um, the issue is I came to find out it's, it's not an error per se, but... Um, um, the way the system is programmed, um, there is supposed to be a space, you know, there's, there's, a, there's supposed to be a space after the comma. When you put in, um, is it perfectly competitive um, market, there's supposed to be a comma and then a space before the other one. So, Actually, Professor, I did so, but still uh, it was seen an error. Because oh, okay. I usually do a space after the comma. Okay. Okay. That was the issue. But um, uh, that's not a big issue. I'm going to correct it. Like I, I spoke to you, Nora, right? Um, yes, exactly. I'm going to correct that. So the... But, uh, um, grammatically, is error. If there is a space before comma, it's error. It's no, no, no. Be comma, a comma space before space. after the comma. Sorry. Okay. A space uh -huh. after the comma. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how the system receives it. But as um, soon as um, you enter it any other way, it just says um, it's, it's incorrect. But we'll correct it for you. We'll correct it for you. All right. Um, let me know if you have any challenge from now so that um, I'll, I'll get everything clear um, so that after our end of semester, everybody will be happy and then um, we'll be able to get ready to enter into another program, see how best we can bring this to an end. And again, Professor, uh, yes. I have one last question. There was a discussion, module two. It was uh, out of 13, but the grade uh, still in the grade book is out of 100. So will it be fixed? I think I fixed that one too. Can you check it? Yes, still it is out of 100 for me. It's still out of 100? Yes. Right now? Yes. Okay, I'm going to, you said what, what, um, what um, quiz was that? Discussion module two. Discussion module two. I think I corrected, but but I'll I'll go back and see again. All right, um, we'll go back and check on that, so that I'll clean everything, make sure that everybody is okay, and then um, we'll do that. So, what Thank I'm you. going to say, to, go go ahead. No, I just so I was saying thank you. Oh, okay, that's fine, Nora. Thank you. It's good at least you bring up these things so that um, it doesn't be at the latter part of the class where people need the agrees and all those. So I'll get it corrected. I'm going to work on that this week. So um, the only thing I'm going to say if there is nothing else coming from you is please just pay attention to your, your books. Those areas that I've given you, make sure you read into details. Question can come from anywhere. Read into details um, so that at the end of the day, you'll be able to um, 
have a, a good grade and then enjoy the class as well. All right. So if there is no more questions, there is no more concerns, I'll see you next weekend. All right, so enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye and thank you, Sam. Thank you, Judilyn. Thank you, thank Professor. You. Thank you, Masoon. Thank you, sir. All right, Clement. So are you, are you taking us next um, section, the next uh, semester? Um, it will depend on the kind of program they give. So I will let you know. All right. And it will be published as, as well. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you. Mm.